The early Commonwealth had several interesting units that would later be the subject of legends and traditions. In this series, we will take an in-depth look at some of the more famous units of the Minutemen. In this particular episode, we will focus on the Sixth Field Artillery, the Power Armor, and the Marine Companies of the Minutemen, their histories, commanders, and battles that each were involved in. Long before the revival of the Commonwealth, artillery had been the core of Minutemen power for decades. The coastal defense mortars located at Fort Independence gave Minutemen commanders invaluable fire support in any skirmishes that were in range of these old guns. During the gunner and raider conflicts, the coastal mortars could be transported by Brahmin trains around the Commonwealth. However, deployment to Far Harbor showed the deficiencies and problems with their existing artillery, specifically their weight. At just under 80 tons in weight, moving the massive artillery pieces was a logistical nightmare. Using dozens of Brahmins and a lot of tenacity, Captain Hazel Atkins was able to move the mortars up to the side of Mount Cadillac. The mortars turned the tide of the conflict on the island, but Captain Atkins swore that this was the last time that he would deploy these guns on the field. Even before the end of the Far Harbor Crisis, plans had been drawn up for a replacement field piece. Using ancient blueprints and captured gunner artillery, the Minutemen designed a lighter, more mobile artillery piece. The 155mm M2 howitzer weighed one-tenth the weight of the old mortars and had better range. Although it has less of a punch, it is much more accurate than it can be easily transported by Brahmin or by rail. Coupled with scout artillery spotters, the artillery system has proved itself on the battlefields of New Hampshire. With greater possible threats coming, the artillery branch of the Minutemen is sure to expand even more. When Captain Dancer was reorganizing the Minutemen, he stressed the importance of power armor units as essential to any future conflict against organized enemy forces. Just before the sole survivor left the Commonwealth, he gave the Minutemen his collection of power armors that he had acquired on his travels. These would form the core of the Minutemen Power Armor Company. The early power armor suits were mismatched sets of parts from various wrecks. The Minutemen painted them in appropriate colors to at least give them appearance of a regular unit. Sympathetic members of the Brotherhood of Steel smuggled fusion cores to the Minutemen to keep the Power Armor Company running during the Gunner War. The Armored Infantry Company became the Minutemen's battering ram during the Gunner and Raider Wars. They led the frontal assaults for the regular companies that trailed behind them, taking on enemy strong points and focusing firepower wherever it was needed. These early conflicts took their toll on the suits. The unit had to wait for parts to be repaired or manufactured. The company was next deployed to Far Harbor just in time to lead the northern assault on the final campaign. The years between Far Harbor conflict and the New Hampshire invasion were spent retooling and rethinking their tactics. The commander of this company, Captain Jonathan Ward, had been studying under Captain Dancer before his untimely death. From his discussions with Dancer, Ward had developed a theory for more effectively deploying the company. Rather than using the power armor as a support unit for regular infantry, he instead proposed to make a power armor company an independent command. The mobility and firepower of the power armor suits could be best used only if they were not tied down to just supporting the infantry. This concept was proven in the New Hampshire campaign as Power Armor Company used its mobility to find weak spots in the enemy line and then smash them open with their firepower. In late 2295, the Civilian Intelligence Agency made a stunning discovery. Following up on local legends and ancient records, the agency discovered that a full company of pre-war T-51 Power Armor suits had been hidden underwater in Lake Winnipesaukee. During the early days of the apocalypse, an officer of the old U.S. Army could not arrange transport for the suits. Rather than have them stolen, he had them sink underwater for later retrieval. 
The suits lay there undisturbed for over 200 years. In late 2295, the Third Minutemen Company was dispatched to the area to begin salvage operations. While they were busy doing this, militiamen troops attacked. The Third Minutemen stubbornly held onto the area until the siege was broken in 2296. The Commonwealth was then able to salvage the power armor suits and began putting together a second company of power armor. During the Far Harbor Crisis, the 7th Transport Detachment was charged with ferrying troops and equipment to the island by ship. Local trappers on the island used small fishing vessels to attack the supply ships and threatened to sever the connection between Far Harbor and Boston. To combat this threat, Lieutenant Commander Jeremiah O'Brien, the officer in charge of the 7th, obtained permission to recruit Minutemen to serve aboard the vessels as Marine Infantry Units. These troopers would protect the vessels as they made the perilous journey across the sea to Far Harbor. Led by Lieutenant Percy O'Connor, the Marines proved themselves in several of those ship-to-ship actions, fending off multiple attacks from the trap pirates. They then provided the bulk of the forces for the infamous Southwest Harbor Raid, which locked up the majority of the pirate fleet in the harbor. In 2295, they would perform a landing at Portsmouth during the New Hampshire invasion and would keep the base from being overrun by militiamen during the Christmas Day attacks. Future plans for the Marines call for the unit to become an amphibious sea-launched unit that can be placed anywhere that the Commonwealth Navy can reach. In the next installment, we will look at the Commonwealth Navy, the 8th Air Mobile Lance, and the 1st Sappers Detachment.